Good afternoon, Malaga Tiang. Malaga Changder. Guasco, Banapalan, Palchangar, Tunga, Bane took Kadit. Did the Banaket take a four kel with the Janang Bio the Borough? Uh, the beginning worship in, in Nuer, Surinese, will begin with Psalm 137. 137.
page 16 pay wal bakel jan bana palan jay to ke je mana palan to ke chor gwan ka gat ke ye ko ngare rode inana amen a bane wa niam pre pal re nogo ko here se ka de kolon mi tok kanan duer ko ngwa na ko Tiene je gekeur ko ran ji ses ko be kon falaka lo dan be ko nyal cha nyal kana ping ante wayi do ral ko nyal ko chur do ko pal pan ka la duere let confess our sin ha ko cha ban nyam do ko ne pa ne sia ne je ki ne du piya Colin <laughs> Yen wa seida, ke to mechi nyo ke je, se shi dia, ke to nyo ke wa, ko zwan ko yini, ko nyo ke wa, me yu ke paleka, ke pida, me yu ke kam ka dan ke kara, ke gore ke paleka ke yu dan ke alaka, ne yu dia dia ke to nyo, ke a ke to nyo ke, ke to nyo mo ke wong, ko a biya ga to, ka ram nyo ke mo. ขอจ๋าละบะเคินขอไปแล้วเด้อขอนยิ้มไปแล้วเด้อขอนขอไปแล้วขอนอะเลาคนเนี่ยละมาตะกี้ปิ้งกิตะตะลอยปอเนเน
Taiman Jalipi Taro. Why shall Jen Kinga duel? Taiman be doing goo. The queer ma Juaji Jaganaz mean one more. Kachija knock and go be ben. Tama condial Tana one me. Niam call. The go bang on a dial, tin charlat, dear qua nukut, tin belatling. Right, Peter, the coroner, Cornelius, and a jidare. To Peter, a talk, Camroye, where he a put, changing iron go to cold nas, dark. Kadung de Raider Dial Ramuluzi Ye Kalakum Bajanok Yen Nai Rai E Jakaji Israel Kalanaz took to go to Queen Mala Nube Kayeshu Karaso Melakuar Nakut Nani Dial Rayamo Jadak the Judea Kelio Tonaka Galilee, the Cor Lagnaz, a key John Lat Kunga Yene and Go Chikodia Churan others, Yirk a year in Gardero. Can a bomb catch a work? One the Dial Lada de Tigo. Kate Canal Dial, the tapping, boomer, one jingle, to go to cut can, to get. Colapco, nain, to go on a dial, to charlat, readily, to Judea, to Jerusalem, to get a knock, to have the wigyard, to do the go to cut a jailies. To the only name, to get a jail. Jaka Judge Kacha Joy Canadian Dunu Kakon Nay Tacha Mac A coat a la name Connay Tachi Miss Kachimas Kajakel Kakor Kame Jarajelis Kachue Ko Largo Bagorani Kalanal Habagoninde Ladin Ru a Jaramichi put a quaint to go by Luke Nanny to take the Ned Hillio. To go the al Nand Dian Lat and go Nay the al in Alcaje. Pick a pearl dreary Jack the Hyode. When what fitter correct to ye and go and a row when can a dial. They shall write Ling. To ye, another can shall shell, can she bend kel, a peter, guy and go, shall much yaka, and garro, why not, a young and a jur. To go, she a kaling rike, the took, curly, kalyaka coat, to you peter way, take a rammy, deppy, till like a nighty, shall ye and go. Nero Jack Jack a con to pain. Could you a laring you back a lack? Could you eat your carasso? Could you get ye tea? Go menin nin kale. Okay. To take a rhino cause? This is word of the God. Thank you. Banner work on the arm. The Queen and I would dare. Queen and I would dare. Banner Jacob John, you could be eight. Cabas Kale, work by duck. Work at John, you could be eight. Cabas Kale, work by duck. Chatangi Tim Dan, go. A dear thing after ye, and we eat you again, Caruso, a guard for. Karamanok, one, 
no ga debo ke jen do bomo ngai ne jen go nang ne ga ko nang ne ko ke lu kon lu ke ke no ko e jen me me ba ne lu ke ros ke lu ke ki ga na shu ke go ga me ba ka ko jen ki am o ke men ki am ne go ngal dan nga me de go ti am ki ma rami nga je en o ye chu jen ga ko rame be ke pi a lag de kanariam lez de jen ye chu kar so kana ben ke pi kara ke ben ke pi kanariam ke ye la nam ke wo ye tok Kerana ini dang diok ti sin ye kena pi kerem kerana diok ti ti kita mat ke ti ti kerja pos yang nak kut abang rejai kredit. Kebane riet ya gor karuani cuka sobeling wirai for the alleluia and hear the gospel reading. Ya pane ya Lord kuaran alleluia ya pane ya Lord kuaran alleluia. The Holy Gospel for today is from John, the 15th chapter. Is he your Lord? As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abided in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy might be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friend if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Yalla kore dweri kon. Alleluia. Mi chen kore naskade. Alleluia. Bane riet. Bane riet. Ling. Lila laka da. This time for children mass. Children, today the the lesson, the gospel lesson for today, talks about abiding in God's love, in Jesus's love. That means staying in it. It means staying in His Word. It means your first learning concerning Jesus is a learning you should be concerned with that which comes from the Bible and the Bible only. The Bible is the word of God, and it's important for you to realize that not everybody out there thinks the same things, and they may be convinced of things that are not the truth. If they are not from the book of truth, and that's what the Bible is, then it's not something to listen to. St. Paul says that if anybody, even an angel, would teach you 
a gospel different than the one that you've learned from in the Bible itself from at first, let that person go to the devil. Let that person be lost. Don't pay attention to him. Don't follow him and don't listen to him. Now, you receive a lot of lessons from your parents about don't go across the street until you've looked both ways and hold my hand while you're going across. That's telling you not to do this, not because they want to take something away from you, but that they want to keep you safe. I'm telling you, God has told us that we should stay in his word, abide in Jesus and what he has taught us in the Bible. Don't listen to other voices. They'll lead you away and you will be lost. That's our children's lesson for today. Listen to Jesus and what he says in his word, the Bible and the Bible only. Thank you. We'll now have the sermon hymn. Uh, the sermon hymn is Seven four, seven four.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today, cry out to us to love one another, and in that cry out, it's telling us that we need to evangelize. The uh, lesson we have for today tells us that we are to share Jesus' love with one another. We see it in Peter coming and talking to the, well, these are Greeks or Romans. And he's talking to them concerning Jesus Christ. Notice that God looks at these people without any discretion concerning who they are. If they are people that are willing to learn about God and to listen to his commands, he wants to take them as his own and be in fellowship with them. That's why he created them. We should understand that. There is this idea that some people are better than others or, or because they look like something different that they have some specialness or they are less than others. That's not the way God sees us. That's the not the way Jesus sees us. And that's not the way we as Christians should see others. We are to love our neighbor. And Jesus even tells us that it's necessary for us to love our enemies. But he tells us we're to love our neighbors ourselves. So there's really not a limit there. And when he's talking about love, he's talking about helping and supporting them. He's not talking about physical love. And we should understand that too. In our work, in our daily lives, we run into people that have problems and make bad choices all the time. Fact is, if you've looked at the mirror lately, you see who I'm talking about. You see yourself as I see myself. We are sinners, poor, miserable sinners. Yes, we are saints. We're Christians. <clears throat> we are, are part of God's family. Well, that's the way God wants it, us to be part of his family. And he doesn't want us to block his love to us and forgiveness but he's not preaching a different gospel. He's only preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So it's what Jesus has said, how Jesus has lived his life, that means anything. The rest of it really doesn't mean much. Oh, yes, we're supposed to live according to God's commandments so that we can live with one another without tearing one another up. That's why we have the commandments in the second table of the law. But in the first table of the law, we have how we're supposed to have fellowship with God. And the first commandment is you'll love God with your whole heart, soul, and mind. That you have no other gods before me is what he says. You know, let me make that a little clearer if I can. I mean, what he's actually saying. You see, what you fear the most or what you love the most is your God. So you can substitute things in place of God. You can take and give them the glory rather than God the glory. You can let them control you, and in many cases I'm talking about your own will, which is different from what God's will is. God tells you very clearly that if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. 
Jesus says that, and he's God. He's God in human flesh. He is the son begotten of his father. He is the only begotten son. We can see that in John. We can read the scripture of John, the, the gospel of John, and we'll find it in at least three different places where he says that he is the only begotten son. And John has recorded this. Now, the, there has been people who have said, well, he, you don't have all the correct message from John as to what he said. You don't really know because the Bible has a lot of mistakes in it. That's not true. I've been working with the scripture P66, Papyra 66. And that brings you back to within from 25 to 50 years from the time that St. John wrote. It's a copy of what St. John wrote. And if the copyist does a good job, he's giving us exactly what St. John had written. Whether he did it himself or he dictated it to a scribe, I don't know. I do know that it, it is of the style of John, that it is specifically John, and it's very accurate. And when you compare that Greek text with the other Greek texts that are out there, you find that they all are in harmony with maybe a, a spelling or something that has to do with time, past time or present time when he's speaking, he was or he is or he did or he has done, those kind of things. That's not a mistake in the scripture. It's clear. And when you look at the scriptures and the different copies of those scriptures that we have, we can see what the message was what the message is that says that God loves you, that God has done everything necessary to save you, that when you try to make yourself worthy for God, when you try to you know, somehow measure up to God's standards so that I can help with my salvation, you actually are blocking God from giving you his grace and forgiveness. The Bible story that is the easiest for me to refer to here is the publican and the sinner or the Pharisee and the publican at the temple. When the Pharisee is talking about how wonderful he is, telling God what all he's doing so that he can be in fellowship with him. He tithes, he, he prays, he does all these different things. And so he is, you know, thinks he's pretty good and he's worthy of God's fellowship. Well, the, the publican, he's a, a tax collector. He's uh, looked down on by the rest of Jewish society because he cooperates with the Romans. He's a person who takes more sometimes than he should be taking. So that makes him a thief. They don't think much of him. And quite frankly, in the temple courts, the publican realizes that he is not a good person. He says, be merciful to me, a sinner. He won't even raise his head up. And Jesus tells us that person went home justified. That is declared righteous clean in God's sight because of what Jesus has done for him. You see, when we lift ourselves up, we get ready for a fall. We don't let God's grace and forgiveness come to us. When we don't admit that we need a Savior and that we are not perfect, now, that perfect standard, that sounds pretty hard. But that's a standard if you're living under the law. God said, be perfect for I, the Lord, your God, am perfect. Hmm. 
you and I can't measure up to that ever since Adam and Eve sinned and rebelled against God. Our only hope is Christ who atoned for us. That is, he paid the price for us. He redeemed us, lost and condemned sinners. You know, there are those who would tell you that you do your part and that after you've done your part, God will do his part. That's not the way it works at all. Jesus tells us that when we do these kind of things, uh, the answer is that we're supposed to stand before our Lord after having done everything that we have done that we think we're supposed to do and confess that we're poor, miserable sinners. We're unworthy servants. This whole thing is mind-boggling because the whole idea of human beings going out and doing things that God has told them not to do becomes very troubling because they're setting themselves up to be destroyed. And those who lead people like that and would teach those kinds of nonsense, false teaching according to the scripture, are leading others away from Christ. They are anti-Christ. And there's an organization out there that you and I know that's called the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. They are not connected with Jesus Christ in any way. They steal his name to turn around and make something to give them some kind of credibility. But they, in the same breath, will say that Jesus and, and Satan are, are brothers. That's blasphemy. Jesus is the only begotten son. That means the, this whole story about pre-existence doesn't exist. It's a fairy tale. Actually, it's a, a fairy tale that's been told for a very long time. It didn't start with the Mormon church. It started back when Plato and Aristotle and this idea that the soul will work its way through and there's a cycle of life and reincarnation and you become good by doing good. That's not true at all. The way it works is that when you come to God humbly and beg and trust that Jesus is your savior, that he has done everything necessary for you to have relationship and to be saved and have eternal life, well, your sins are forgiven. That means they're cleansed. That you're justified in God's sight. You can live in front of him. But if you don't have that, God's wrath will protect himself and destroy you. You know, there's so much invested in this whole thing called Mormonism. There's so much of the family, so much effort, so much talent, so much time wasted and abomination in God's sight. For you can't make yourself God and any system that claims that they can make you into or lead you into becoming God, well, that's a violation of the first commandment. You will have no other gods before me, before my face. I do not share my glory with another. But when you impose your will against God's will, when you have to have your way rather than do what God says, then it's the highway for you, the highway to hell. Now, I'm not telling this because I don't like people or that I hate Mormons. I don't. I actually, the reason I'm telling you these things is I care. And if you don't listen and don't care, then there's nothing I can really do for you, nor Christ. 
Think about that a minute. If you want to go to heaven, you have to go through Christ, not through Joseph Smith or some thing that would turn around and cause you to have to do things or buy things or give your life to their ideas. The gospel of Jesus Christ, as Paul will tell you, if anybody tells you different than what the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is recorded in the scriptures, and most clearly in the gospel of John, if you would lead others like that, then he says, let you be accursed. And that's St. Paul saying that. And he had the heart and the mind of someone who truly loved people. He understood us. He knows how we are. So like Cornelius, who sent for Peter to come and talk and tell what he had to tell them. We too need to listen to what the scriptures say and give our heart, mind, and soul to God according to his word. Not some fantasy that somebody might have, not some thing that they've made up because it will enrich their lives. The Mormon church is a business and it's in the business to lead you to hell. Now they don't want to advertise it that way. But why do you think that you're going to fare better than our first parents if you're going to take that first commandment and rebel against God? What you fear the most and what you love the most is your God. So if your heart and soul is set on yourself or set on some dream that leads to hell, that's where you're going. And I pray that you wake up. I invite you to come and be taught from the scripture what it says, truly says, in the most simple manner to understand that God loves you that he's done everything necessary to save you from your sins. I hear a lot of church talk, especially on the TV, about the blood of Christ and how you need to be washed in the blood of Christ. They keep talking these statements that unless you are a Christian, you don't even have an idea what they're talking about except something grotesque. What is being mixed there is atonement. And the sacrificial system for the Old Testament was atonement for the sins of the people so that they stay in the presence of God, that he could dwell with them. That was in the tabernacle that tent that they were bringing around, and then later the temple when they built the temple. But God's wrath will break out against those who are sinners unless an atonement is made. And that whole system was pointing to Jesus. It was a type. It was literally learning by show and tell that Jesus did exactly that. His blood cleanses you from your sins because his blood is shed for you and is given to you in his sacrament. But that's another story. And unless you understand what I've said beforehand, that could turn you away. It did his initial disciples, but he never turned away from that. He said you had to be baptized. He told you that you need to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all persons of the Godhead, referred to by the Orthodox Christian Church as the Trinity. Now, other people have trouble with the Trinity because they try to understand God, describe God, and try to be God themselves. We can only say what the scriptures say. 
We can't say more than that. And if you take your mind and you try to think what the heart and mind of God is, you're headed for disaster. For do you really believe that you can be smarter than God? When you start looking at all the things he's created and all the things that he has given, it's impossible. Take him at his word. Believe what he has said in his scriptures. You know, this is Mother's Day also, celebration of Mother's Day. And I would tell you that the love that God has for you is like a mother for her children. For you are God's children. He does not have a wife, which is another problem with Mormonism. He doesn't make spiritual babies. There was only one birth from God begotten of the Father from eternity, and that's Jesus Christ. So there's the Father who is begotten, who has begotten the Son, and there's the Holy Spirit who proceeded from the Father and the Son. That is all we can really say, because that's what the scriptures have revealed. And the scriptures are the truth. They cannot be broken. And Jesus has taught that also. So when Mormonism or <coughs> any of the other isms out there who base their system on work righteousness and what you have to do to get to be capable to, to have God in your presence, how you have to work yourself up, you have to do good to be good, and when you're good enough, that doesn't work. That is false. That's the devil at work in the human minds. You have to be humble. You have to be like the publican who confesses his sin. And God, who is gracious and merciful, will lift you up. He will forgive you your sin and cleanse you from your unrighteousness. And then you'll live as a Christian and baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You will join his church. You'll be part of his fellowship and become part of his family. Again, you won't go out on your own to some other planet to make spiritual babies. That's foolishness. On the other hand, if you are Christian, if you join his family, why then? You are part of his family. You're in fellowship with him. And you are then what you were created for. Think of it as your mother loving you and forgiving you, having taken part in the creation of you through God and your father, that you were made for fellowship with God and for his good works. That is him working in you to do the things you know you ought to do. And the final whole thing here, he says, stay in my commandments. Because if you stay in Jesus' commandment, then you're truly his disciple. You're not a uh, a slave. You're a friend. You're a brother or a sister. You know, I told a, a man here the other day when he told me that he had a friend that made bad choices. I said, you know, we all make bad choices. And we have to come to God and confess those that we're a poor, miserable sinner, and we've done these things. And God will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We need to be in his word. And his spirit needs to be in us so that the works that we do that are acceptable in his sight are things that we've done because he is living in us. And we are his and belong to him and not to the devil. 
Amen. The peace of God that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith until life everlasting. Let us depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. Banavanyam Kapalka Nasini Yeshu. Let us con then confess our faith in Apostle Creed.
The meaning of a song in Nuer talking about what a happy man, what a happy woman, and what happy boy, girl, children, and elderly people who been called and uh, lead by their Lord. That's the meaning of the verses that the man, woman, boy, girl, all children, and all elderly people who have been walk with Jesus. They are all happy all the time. I am going to pray for the pray for the church prayer. Let us pray, finally. Lagi tando ay kumala, kudlibom skial, kudichang yang nipin, kudchakada. Loga tes, loga tando ay la, kudu yu kaman nu, yu kam kepen kwan kwan, yu kam kyan wan me, yu kam wai wa, yu kam kibiana do neke, loga tes. เดี๋ยวนี้ที่กว่าตัวปกปลึกกันกูเรียนย้อนเนี่ยเรียกกันเองกูเรียนเด็กกันเองกันนั่นเองส่วนเย็นกันนั่นเองเลยกว่ากัน
on the other hand, 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 the other Lanadia Kuru, la Casa of Sudan, you will break him be Yawato, Pinanoko, in Pandigi. No book and man be the name. Can you kill a group of you? As you said, Missouri Senate, Rock of Mountain District, Circuit of Utah, Salt Lake City, a man St. John's and Jude. The Yarapan of Pandigi, who are a big group of you. The Yala Tapa Taka Trivas, in case you can mention the Kayaka, we are done. For the Malu, the Kayaka, the way in the Alka Malvigani, seeing all the Alkohol, you know, this cry, where I'm going. You know, a Panapal, the Pal, in the Anikon, where I'm the Pal Jami, we pray for the pray that. Our Lord told us to pray. Guaram Tanyama. Chudulosque. A poor baby. Great Malapi, the Malapinyama. Come on, Miloy Chan Walame. Do you know the thing at your cock? Hit them low, a little thing in the end of him. She will go to one bow, I'm saying. Come away here. Go right you. And one do. Many point you. And the right, no. I mean, we continue with the closing hymnal. Bana wa miam, kadit nga kona palan. One one nine. Song one one nine.
Bana Pask. Bana Yakab. Lian Okonial. Lian Nakot. Konial Yapos. Kabe Yatik. Konial. Why Namla come here? Kabe Yelok. Konial Yatit. Kabe Kamal. If you're gone, the God, the year for the God of order. In honor.